first time I actually set eyes on Tweety Pie was in 2006 at the Detroit Autorama during the Ed Ross Spotlight display. I was there filming for Mad Fabricators 4, and it was pretty overwhelming and awesome at the same time to see all the surviving Roth cars in one place. I always paid more attention to the glamorous cars that Roth did, like the Outlaw and the Beatnik Bandit, and not knowing or paying attention to the Tweety Pie, I just thought it was a T that he did before the crazy took over. Later on at the show, I was drawn back to the car, and I took a good hard look at it, and I remember saying to myself, man, I really would love to build something like this someday. From there on out, I had a soft spot for Tweety Pie. Tea buckets weren't as popular with the new generation hot rodder guys like myself. Guys like me were looking for Model A's or 32's. But there was a few tees that sparked my interest, like Dan Collins' Little Purple Tee, Mark Skipper's Cool Tee, and of course Von Franco's Lightning Bug and Kooky Car Clone. So years went by and I built my coupe and I had a blast with that car, it was so much fun. But life got the best of me and I had to put it up for sale. A year or so went by after I sold the car and I had no real intentions to build another car. To be honest, I was kind of over the whole thing. Until my buddy Lucky Burton said, hey, I have this tea, it's pretty rough, and I think you better take it or else I'm going to kick your ass out of the club. He said, do what you like with it, just get back into doing it. I was a little reluctant and I really didn't want to get back into it just yet, but being a hot rodder, once it's in front of you, that hot rod drug kicks in, your mind starts racing, and eats away at your brain until it gets done. So the long-term plan came about, and what I wanted to build was something like this. A little Roadster pickup that was influenced by cars like Ivo's T and Mark Skipper's T. But I kept thinking to myself, damn it, I want to build a small little wheelbase car like Tweety Pie. Um, but it would entail me cutting up the frame and doing all sorts of crazy alterations to it and it just wouldn't seem right and it just was way too much work. So one day I'm over at Bobby Walden's shop and I start snooping around his back area to see if there's any parts laying around. And lo and behold, I come across this. A pair of 1932 Ford frame rails that had been shortened and cut up. My mind was kind of blown, it was almost too perfect. Right then and there I decided I'm gonna clone Tweety Pie. It also had a cut up 1932 Ford cross member. So I ran inside, I asked Bobby, what is up with those frame rails out in the back? He said nothing, just get that rusty shit out of the back of my shop. I mean, what are even the odds of that, finding a set of cut up 32 rails that were almost exactly like the ones under Tweety Pie? So it was totally meant to be, and that's just when it started. The 32 frame, I'm not sure where he got. Um, I saw that being cut up in the garage, and um, as that went, you know, came along and, and the fitting of it, they both worked on it really hard, yeah. you know. All of that stuff came out of the wrecking yard. It's parts hunting time, and this is probably one of my favorite parts about building a car. Some of the things I'm going to pick up right away is a rear end, a front end, and wheels and tires. That way I'll have all the bare minimum stuff to build a rolling chassis. So searching online, I came across this 39 Ford Banjo rear end. Um, it was a pretty good deal. It's a little rusty and a little crusty, but it will definitely do the job and when I went and picked it up it turned out it was a fellow hot rodder named Jared and uh, he gave me a good deal on it and now I got at least this part of uh, what I need for the rear um, that should be alright for our mock-up we also went over to the RPM Nationals and at the swap meet I picked up a set of backing plates spindles and some drums um, and I just had them blasted So here's my part stash so far, I got my banjo rear end, 32 rails, 36 Ford front end, um, I got some pedals, cross member, and with the front end it also came with a uh, 36 rear end. So got that so far. My next dilemma is this body. This is the front half of a 1923 Ford Phaeton, which is like a four seater roadster. But a lot of people like Ivo and Norm Gabrowski used the front half and adapted a truck bed to it. But Tweety Pie was an actual roadster. So the dilemma is, is either find an original roadster body or try to find the back half of a Ford Phaeton. Because the back half is very similar to the actual roadster half. And then graph the two together. So my quest for a roadster body or a roadster rear quarters or a Phaeton rear half um, began in... 
two weeks after I decided this, my buddy Alex, a.k.a. Mr. Pennyhammy, decides that he's going to put a Phaeton body up for sale. And so I gave him a call immediately, and we made a deal um, to just buy the back half. So he's going to hook me up. All right, so we made it here to Alex's house, and let's go check out what he got. <laughs> That's Alex. Hello. What's going on, buddy? What's up, man? Alex built that in here. Yeah, the penny handy. Uh, built in two car garage with minimal tools and no knowledge. That's all we need. Yeah, that's all we need. Just a little bit of inspiration, right? <laughs> Awesome. Look at those wheels. Yep. Oh. These are going to get wrapped and slick. Look how deep those suckers are. What? That should fit in here. What? Look at how small that thing looks compared to that. Yeah. <laughs> I was measuring, so with the carbs, I should be sitting up about right there. That's not too bad. No, I mean, all I've got to look out is this little corner anyways. <laughs> yeah, right. That's all you gotta see anyways. That's all you need. That's badass, bro. Yeah. You're gonna haul ass in this little bitch. I hope so. <laughs> so what's the story on this guy? What this did... guy, okay, so I'm a big fan of tees. Yeah. I love tees because they're actually the only thing that's still affordable. Yeah. And um, I had bought this thing. I loved it, cool. I had a lot of parts left over. I came across this one. I have always loved turtle deck, turtle deck tees. Yeah. Ever since I saw Tommy Eyewolves, which I think is the car. I love Tommy Eyewolves, so T. So I have another Hemi and I figured, hey, I got two Hemis. Why not? I know a T will fit a Hemi nicely. Right. <laughs> so that was what I was gonna do with this thing. I was gonna shorten it, cut it up and everything. But then I found this thing. So and then I found the turtle deck. I'm like, all right, cool. So now I got a dilemma. Which one do I build? Which one do I keep? Right. And that's where I come into play. That's where you come into play. <laughs> so you need the back half, which I kind of was going to use originally, but I don't really need it. Yeah. Especially what I'm going to do. I mean, I can just cut it right. Yeah. There. That's basically what I have is that front half. Yeah. And it's just all molded in basically. Yeah. And it gives me an opportunity to help you out. So I'm yeah. like, all right. That's awesome, dude. I appreciate it. So like, yeah. All right. Let's cut this bitch up. Let's do it. <laughs> appreciate it out. yeah you rule yeah. it's always fun cutting up 96 year old metal and thanks to alex now i have the rear half and it looks a lot more like a roadster he also sold me these windshield stanchions that i needed as well so i put up that 36 banjo rear end for sale and my buddy out in arizona ron he had a 265 small block and uh, needed a 36 rear end so we did a trade and I also bought some wheels out there, and, and he delivered them during uh, Father's Day Roadster Show. Ron and I did a little trade. Is that the lock? Yeah. We got this. Oh, what's got up? What's up with this thing? Where did it come from? This came out of Phoenix. You, know you called was. and said, "I need an engine for a new project," and I said, "Done." And I even delivered it. What a guy! What a guy! You're the best, Ron. You're the best. Do you know what it was in, or just no? This was in something. Just was in a yard that a friend of mine bought out, nice. and it was sitting on a pallet. So. The other cool thing is that he picked up my wheels too that I got. Back up under the concrete. Yeah, buddy. Thanks, buddy. You're welcome. So I called a couple places on rebuilding this motor, and it turns out 265s are pretty expensive to rebuild. Um, so I'm gonna start looking for maybe a 283. They're a lot cheaper. 
parts are easier to find and I'm on a budget with this car so I'm not trying to spend a bunch of money and plus I'll get a little bit more horsepower. It's not exactly the right motor but close enough. So I put the word out that I was looking for a 283 and I got a call from my good buddy Dave Shutton over at Galpin Speed Shop and uh, he needed a website and a couple other things and he said I got a bunch of parts for you so let's trade some work for some parts and here we are. Alright we're at Galpin and um... I'm going to drop off this motor and get a new motor. Word. So Dave was kind enough to um, trade me some work <laughs> and for some motor stuff. But uh, what's the deal yeah. with that thing? So this is a early 60s 283. I forget what year. I forget where I got it. <laughs> I forget almost everything. <laughs> it's been sitting here with cool shit on it for a couple of years. Um, I remember, I think I got this from my buddy Dennis in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I believe it came out of an Impala, like a 62 or 63 Impala. All I know about this is it's orange and it turns over like this. <laughs> well, I guess that's up to you. I guess that's a good start. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's better than what I had, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, um, cool. I mean, it's clean inside, so we'll, uh, we'll drag it in the back and take all my cool shit off it that you yeah. can't have. Oh, thanks. And I'll put then, other cool shit on it. Uh, we will transfer the cool shit to that rusty pile of shit that you're bringing me to take this place. <laughs> and uh, we'll go from there. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah. Happy to help your little project. Along with the motor, he hooked me up with rear backing plates, rear drums, a bunch of brake parts, brake shoes, front backing plates that were complete with all the mechanics, Eelco distributor terminals, which are totally kick-ass, clear plug wires, and the awesome T-Bird wheel. Dave Shutton, you rule, my friend. Last week I was uh, checking out Craigslist and I came across an ad for some white wall tires, so Harrison and I went halves on them. So now I got some tires to mount on those wheels that I got from Arizona. So what we're going to do today is drill out these rivets, knock the center out, and reverse these rear wheels so I can mount these tires on them. Reversing the wheel is a process of removing the rivets from the factory wheel punching out the center, and then flipping the center around, making the back side of the rim the front side now with the center in place. Yeah. The offset of reversing a wheel allowed for clearance on some cars, but it also gave it a kick-ass look. So after we had the wheel trued, I had Harrison TIG weld the center section back in for me. front 
tires showed up today, so I ran right over to the tire guy and had them installed. Um, they're all balanced and ready to rock. I love fresh white walls. Awesome. So now my tires are here. I'm going to take them over to the shop and uh, throw them with the rest of the pile that's been collecting. Speaking of shop, so my good buddy Harrison ended up getting a new shop right up the street from my house and he offered me a little corner of the shop to be able to put together the car and store parts since my garage was kind of packed full of stuff. So I dragged all the parts from outside inside to the shop and uh, I threw some jack stands and some cinder blocks and kind of put things in place that would kind of look like the chassis would um, and it's you know it's funny to see it's it's kind of like oh it's starting to sort of look like something one of the cool things I've seen already with this car is the love that my friends give me so many of you have reached out and asked me if I needed anything or what can they donate or how can I help and I'm really kind of blown away on everybody wanting to help or you know even just trade work or do stuff to help me get this car done and I can't thank you guys enough you guys totally rule this car is not just built by me, it's built by all my friends that are all along this journey with me. I just have like a little hand in it and everybody helps and it's awesome and I can't thank you guys enough. So um, you guys totally rule and I look forward to keep building on this car um, as we go. Mm -hmm.